Hello and welcome to Wings Tutorial 3 for Google SketchUp. In this video we're going to look at making some more advanced shapes so we can model things like our shoes. Okay, so far all the shapes we've made have been kind of plain. Even if they're curved on top, like the circle, on the sides they've still been very flat. So what we're going to look at is how to make some really nice curved shapes. We've got several tools that we're going to use to do this. The first tool set you want to make sure you have up is the Curve Aloft tool set. So if we go to View, Toolbars, and click on Curve Aloft, you'll get these three buttons here. The first one is a loft between different shapes. Now you might not understand what a loft is at this stage, but that's okay. What I'd like you to do is to draw some different arcs in different places so I'm using see it goes red there so I know it's going directly sideways that will do to start me so I've got some different shapes floating in space mostly in line with each other okay we're going to click on the one that looks like the face the first tool from the curve aloft and then it's going to ask us to pick in order one, two, three shapes. Once we've selected our shapes, we hit the plus, and you can see it's going to do its best job possible to join up between them. Now, you might like to experiment at this stage with these different buttons here. This one makes it flat between them. Clicking these will add more of a curve, make it a little bit smoother between them. You might like to experiment with the different shapes that are here until you get it looking just how you would like it to look. I think I'll settle for something like that. When you're done you click the plus and it makes your beautifully curved shape. Exit out of that. Okay, something to take note of is it makes it into a group so if you'd like to edit this curve you need to double click on it or alternatively you can right click on it and explode it so it's no longer a group but just keep that in mind if you're wondering why you can't edit part of it from here we could enclose this shape by simply joining up the lines Okay, so that's one way of making nice curved shapes. This one, they can be floating anywhere out in space. You can have as many of them as you like. In their example, they actually do a face. So you could have all the different lines across a face, draw them in 3D, and then select them one by one. Another really useful one is this skinning one on the side here. The way this one works is you have a frame. So we'll set up a frame here. We'll give it a square base and then I'm going to draw some different curves going off in different directions. I'm going to draw a curve there and I'm actually going to select this curve and I'm going to rotate it if I can which I can't let's make it a little bit more complex might have a line going to there, to there so basically I draw an outline some different guidelines for how I want the shape to be I then click on my skinning tool and I'm going to pick the outline that I want it to join up for all of these. And when I'm done I click the tick and it's going to do its best to join up all of these shapes. Now you'll notice here this one's not quite working out so I'm going to exit out I'm going to draw one more guideline from there to there. I'm also going to delete that from the middle. 
and we'll see if it works a little bit better this time. Okay. There we go, so that guideline has helped. It's told it that I want it to go up there. Once again, you've got these different buttons. You can click to experiment the way the shape goes. I'll just leave it on the normal one. Click the tick when I'm finished. And it has made a whole bunch of surfaces between all of these, joining them up as best as it can. Okay, another way we can achieve this type of effect is with the skin and bubble tool. If you don't have that up, also bring it up from the toolbar. Soap bubble. This one won't let you put in quite as many shapes, but it's quite fun to play with. So I need to select them first this time. Hold shift. Notice the plus minus comes up and I can select them a couple at a time. Click on skin. Hit enter, and we get this really nice 3D graphic of it filling the gap. So we'd have to do this one one at a time. So I wasn't quite happy with that. I can click on it, and then click on the third one along the bubble tool, and then I can type in a letter, and it will blow it up or deflate it as if it was a balloon. So if I type in 300 and hit enter, it's probably a little bit much. So let's try 100. It'll suck back down. See that it's sucked in there? So let's try a negative number, see if we can blow it up. Minus 200 blows it up. So you can fiddle with your shape, get it just how you need it. Okay, our next tool is really good for adding subtle little curves on existing shapes. So I have this rectangle here, and I would like to curve this corner. There's a way that I can do it, and that is to draw an arc on there, and then to push pull it away. But what happens if I want to do every corner? If I want to take off this line, and both edges are already curved, how can I draw the curve across there to set it up? The answer is that I can't. Luckily, we have some fillet tools to get those up. Go to toolbars and it, click on round corner. So say I wanted this, this whole thing to be round, I select it all, click on round corner. I can put in how much of a curve I want. Let's go for a really big one here, 400. Click OK and you can see it's made nice curves for me. I'll undo that and this time I'm going to click only that edge and that edge hit the tick and it only curves those two edges so that's another really useful tool for doing some advanced shapes one other one we'll do is joint push pull so I wanted to make this whole side thicker it won't actually let me do it because it's a curved surface and only let me do the flat ones. This is where joint push pull comes in. I can select this whole surface, click on the J for joint push pull, or under tools, joint push pull, just the first one. And you'll see from the preview there, it's actually doing the whole round surface and it's trying to predict the type of shape that we're after. Press enter when you're done and it's done the whole round shape. So a suggested workflow might to be to draw a flat skin or loft and then select the surface then joint push pull it and you can add some thickness to the entire thing. One last one we'll do is called tools on surface. When you're doing your shoes you probably want different colors to be across. Say this was the round part of a shoe when you're using your paint bucket it's going to do this whole thing in one go. So you might like to split it up if you bring up the toolbar for tools on surface you'll get this one along here and you click the first one to enter the mode and then you've got all your different drawing shapes here so say I wanted to have a circle here I click the circle and now the circle that I'm drawing 
actually curves across there. Very handy. Another good one is the freehand one. Okay, now we'll find that if we come back to our paint bucket tool, that that is a separate one. So like you might like to on your shoes, if you want to draw stripes across things, stuff like that, you can segment up the surfaces and then you'll be able to paint them as you wish. Like always, once you've drawn some sort of complicated shape of your choice with some different curves showing some of the techniques from this video, I would like you to do the 3D text. Put it somewhere where it can be seen easily. So obviously I'm going to need to make mine a lot bigger. So it can be seen. Go to file, save as. Exercise 3 dash your name and then go to file, export, 2D graphic, exercise 3 dash your name and upload that JPEG or PNG to McMoodle for us to mark. 